Hey, so this is Chris Gorman Cinema, and I'm going to be making a short tutorial on how to get your character ready for animating or posing. So what you might have noticed is that the World of Warcraft skeleton is kind of a pain in the ass to animate because there are no rooted bones. You might be wondering what is a rooted bone? So a rooted bone is a bone that is pretty much rooted, which means it's in place. So if I move the for example the hip area which uh, is going to move the whole character here if I have a rooted bone on the arm the arm is going to stand in place so I'm going to be showing you how to do that I'm also going to be showing you how to do a few uh, simple texturing th uh, things that you might find handy uh, depending on uh, what type of gear you get and render it so as you might see here uh, this mask is a lot darker inside the actual viewer uh, viewport than in the render window where it gets lighter so I'm going to show you how to fix that and if you're having uh, problems wanting to redo uh, specific parts of your character's uh, mesh like skin for example hair color uh, I'm going to show you how to do that so um, I'm going to do the uh, meshing stuff first what you want to do is you want to open the material editor which can be found beneath Autodesk 3ds Max 2015 by the renderer. So, uh, uh, depending on how new your model, I mean Autodesk is, your s material editor might look like this. Uh, it says Slate Material Editor. I'm I never use it, so uh, I'm going to show you how to use the one I do use. Uh, what you do is you click on modes. And you click on compact material editor and then you get this material editor which I'm gonna be showing you how to use uh, so what you do here is you just click on one of these slots have one selected it doesn't matter which one and you want to click on this X here and you want to click yes this doesn't delete anything in your scene it just deletes the material from the material editor so now when you have this round white circle what you want to do is go down to diffuse and to the right of diffuse there's this small tiny checkbox which you will want to click on and in this viewport here material map browser you click on the bit map here you can select your texture so since i'm gonna be reading yeah, this guy's hair and i have white hair here i'm just gonna change it to uh, orange just to have uh, show you an example so when this one opens here, your material should show up in this circle and there's pretty much nothing you want to do in uh, this hair not at least, not right now so what you do is, you click on this arrow down here and you want to click on the your character which should open up this menu again and since this is hairstyles uh, you want to make sure that you check off two-sided hair in shade the basic parameters, two-sided you also want to go up to the show shaded material in viewport and you want to click it. This means that uh, if I put on the texture now, if I turn around the character, the hair should show from the backside. He should not uh, look like he's bald and it should show from the front instead of just from the front. So uh, what you want to do now to apply the uh, material is you want to click on your character and uh, this is gonna depending on if you are in create menu or not if you are in create menu it's not gonna do anything but if you click on the rainbow slash modify panel uh, this is gonna open here uh, you want to click on editable mesh and you want to click on yes on this one it doesn't do anything unless you majorly screw up something uh, I've not yet been able to do that so it's pretty safe uh, so what you want to do here now, you don't want to click anything uh, you want to make sure that you click on the elements here or any of these red uh, dots or triangles whatever uh, this means that now whatever you do you are in the mesh mode it's not going to turn off so uh, what you can do now is with the uh, elements checked or the element box like the 3d square you can just select your hair and you want to uh, then when like when you have all of the hair I'm just gonna do half hair because I'm gonna be lazy 
um, you just in your material editor you just click on it and you hold in and you drop it onto the red spots there so now that means that he has orange hair on the spots that are changed uh, what you want to do now if you want for example say you want to redo this guy's eyes but his eyes are closed so a nice way to do that is just click on his face here and you want to go to the menu again right here it says hide and you want to hide it so now you have the eyes and you do like you did with the hair you just drag it and drop it from the material editor when you are done changing the eyes or whatever else you want to change that is hidden like this what you do is you go back here and I click on unhide all so this is going to show the face again so that is basically how you change your characters uh, mesh without changing the whole mesh so now um, as with the mask problem here it's lighter than it's supposed to be uh, what you want to do to fix that is go to the material editor again if you look close to it you want to click on this pick material from object thing here like in photoshop you click on a mask and it whips the mask uh, the mask mesh uh, skin template thing is gonna show up here in the circle what you want to do is you want to click on this M by diffuse mask or diffuse I don't even know but you click on this M it's going to open this menu here and what you want to do is you want to go to alpha source and click on non opaque you uh, you should find it in the right bottom here if you haven't touched anything it should be exactly on the bottom here but yeah you can see it there so uh, now if I render my scene it's going to look like this so you ha you're going to have to do that on a lot of gear types in World of Warcraft, I don't know why but uh, it pretty much fixes everything so just do that and now to add some helpers I'm gonna try to do this as fast as possible uh, if you have a second view here like I do I like using the bounding box view Let's see. I'm just changing it to perspective so I'm gonna do one arm and one leg and the hips uh, so if you have your skeleton cleaned, which I do recommend that you clean everything, make sure that everything that doesn't move the bones of the character, that should be hidden. I do not recommend you delete it, so if you watch my tutorial one, just put it another layer and hide it. But yeah, um, for the arm, you, you see there are two... Uh, there are two bones that move the shoulders one which is this v-shaped hair uh, it moves part of the upper body hair and then you have this one which only moves the shoulder and arm I always click on that one the top one here so you want to make sure it's selected what you do then is you click on animation IK solvers and high solvers and you want to click on the bottom one here uh, this is gonna okay so now it's in my useless layer but yeah it's gonna open up a small blue line like this I'm gonna just you don't have to watch this uh, but yeah uh, so uh, it's gonna open up this blue thing here and if you move that blue thing you see that the arm moves with it so that's basically what you want and uh, the best part is it's a rooted bone so if you move the character now that blue bone is gonna stay on that spot all the time uh, but it's kind of uh, bothersome to have to move this blue thing so what you do is you go to the uh, create panel here which is the sun and you make sure to click on the this one sub menu which says helpers and down there you should find something which says dummy you just click on the screen and drag out a, a box like this now what you do is you go to the quick align tool here you click on it and you want to make sure you click on this arm which is the bottom arm the one you um, put your blue helper thing on like this so now it's uh, quickly aligned with the bone perfectly and the next thing you do now to finish it off is you click on the select and link tool here you click on the blue you drag it and drop it onto the green one 
and now if you click on the green bone your arm is going to move like this it's going to move with it uh, what you want to do now is you want to make sure that you can rotate the arm uh, the best way to do that is you click on the white bone there again the bottom arm bone go to the animation tab click on constraints and you want to choose orientation constraints you then click on the green box and now it's going to be like this it's also going to open up this menu here in the motion panel which is the wheel all you need to do here is click on the bottom one here which is keep initial offset you want to click on it and it's going to move the arm back nothing more you have to do now if you click on it you move it like this and you can now rotate it and it's all good um, so you want to do the same thing for the leg the leg is a bit um, easy I guess well they are just as easy both of them uh, but yeah you want to click on this v-shaped upside down one here which is the leg you have it selected uh, you want to click on the animation panel here IK solvers high solver and you want to drag it onto the bottom leg bone which is beneath the uh, and no, wait, not the beneath the ankle but but it's pretty much you want to put it onto the ankle bone which is this one so now we have that blue one again and you want to make a helper you can copy your other helper by holding down shift and moving it down like this you then want to quickly align this helper with the quick align tool up there again align it to the bone and then you go to the uh, select link one again click on the blue IK chain and drop it onto the green one you then click on the bone to add the rotation you have it selected you go to animation click on constraints and go to orientation constraint click on the green box and it's going to look like this again and now you go to the motion panel here which came up and click on keep initial offset so that's how you do it for both legs and arms you're going to have to do it individually on both of those two I'm not going to do them now but if I click on these trolls uh, main bone here now which is going to move the whole body you're going to notice that the ones I did it on the added the helpers onto those now stand in place because they are not rooted bones which are much easier to animate with uh, I also do recommend that instead of uh, using this bone every time which it can be a hassle to find because it's just this one little dot here instead of one of these lines so what I want to do is you go to the uh, create one again or you copy this helper and you select an uniform the scale tool pretty much and you scale it up like this click on quick align and align the box to the bone you want it added to and make it whatever size I think I'm gonna make it like this and then you want to click on the select and link tool again and you click on make sure that you have the correct bone selected it's gonna light up a bit compared to the other ones and here you just link it to the green box you're not gonna have to add rotation or IK bones to the hips only to the legs and arms so yeah that's how you get your character ready for animating pretty much it's a really easy simple setup and it works wonders I've used it for most of my videos I haven't really needed anything more professional so um, I do recommend it instead of uh, not using any helpers at all as it makes it 10 times easier to pose uh, you can just make him sit down like this and you can move his leg like his leg is never going to move after his upper body unless you then click on these green helpers and you can link those by with the select link tool again to this uh, main body helper here and then they're going to follow but I never do that I usually like them rooted so that they are like this I also usually add a uh, let's see I usually also add a bone which uh, is in between hey just make it a bit smaller 
what you can do here is you can if you take all your helpers including the uh, hip one and just link them onto the spawn here that means you can move the whole character and still these are going to be they're not going to be rooted compared to that bone but they are going to be themselves rooted like this so you can just do stuff like this it makes it a lot easier so i hope that um, explains everything you needed to know about the animating or oh, that is good enough uh, you are going to have to look into uh, other stuff yourself because i don't really use any more helpers than this i do use some for the eyes but that's it uh, i'm going to show one more thing which is the light because when you render your character it looks like shit it looks like this uh, so what you want to do for that is just you go to the create tab and you add a light here uh, yours is probably gonna be in the photometric yeah, thing here so just click on it click standard you can add a omni or any of the light I think just click put it in the scene uh, it's gonna look like shit like this uh, what you do then is you see this drop down menu here you just click on advanced effects and there's one that says ambient only and this gives you the model view effect if you that's the effect you want to go for I usually do it because it takes a lot less rendering time uh, if you do want to play around with lighting lights like yeah I'm not gonna make a tutorial for that but I'm sure there are some nice tutorials out there for it but what you pretty much do is just add a lot of lights adjust the brightness etc and you're gonna get the look you want to, uh, eventually so that's pretty much how you do it i recommend you play around with the program and like i said i hope this tutorial helped you uh, if there's any other type of tutorial you want then uh, just leave it in the comment section below and i might do it it depends on if i have any experience with it or not so yeah any question is welcome also and uh, constructive criticism on my tutorial is also really helpful for my next ones so yeah see you